To my knowledge, out of 376 movies Ku Fung was in, he only took the starring role once in 1973's Master of Kung Fu. This movie is a surprisingly serious flick about Wong Fei Hung, the most filmed hero in movie history, and takes a heavy realist tone. Not as heavy as Gordon Liu's 1976 Challenge of the Masters, but not a romp like the Jet Li or Jackie Chan Wong Fei Hung films. It's nice though to see Ku Fung shine in a lead role, but Ku Fung didn't really need a lead role. He was the ultimate third string actor in almost every film he did. He was a villain, a clown, a mastermind, and even occasionally a hero. I've talked before about his genius turn as Wu Da Long in Tiger Killer, where he pours pathos into the tragic murder victim who drives the plot. In the heavy drama Killer Constable, which is all about police brutality, he appears to be the villain until you realize he isn't. He's a dad trying to provide for his blind daughter, and he gives his life to make sure that she's provided for. The storyline is cribbed from an earlier Chang Che movie, The Invincible Fist but it's nestled in nicely here to make sure you realize that Ching Kuang Tai's dirty Harry-like hero is actually not the hero or the villain of this movie, he's just a sucker. Primarily, Ku Fung played villains, and he was great at it. He did this in costume dramas and modern fare. His mustache-twirling villain in the King Kong ripoff Mighty Peking Man was even more obvious than Charles Grodin in that awful Dino De Laurentiis version, and he didn't even have a mustache to twirl. Maybe his most iconic role is as the leader of the Iron Boat Clan in Avenging Eagle, an unlikely team-up of T. Lung and Alexander Fu Sheng, where T. Lung hunts down a criminal organization that he recently has quit. Ku Fung plays the number one eagle, and while he doesn't nearly get the screen time of the other two stars, he comes out roaring with literal eagle claws, the kind of stuff that any kid watching kung fu theater on a Saturday afternoon would never forget. Occasionally, Ku Fung veered into silly territory, like, say, Bat Without Wings, where he donned Gene Simmons makeup in a confusing Gu Long-inspired mystery. Gu Long, if you're not a fan of Chinese pulp fiction, was a popular writer back in the 60s responsible for many of the bewildering kung fu plots of the era. His novels are terse and dialogue heavy, but full of unexpected twists and extremely colorful characters. Many of his adaptations have become classics, like, like Killer Clans, Clans of Intrigue, and the Sentimental Swordsman films, as well as one of my favorites, Blood Parrot, which is surely one of the most bizarre films ever made. And of course, Ku Fung pops up in several of these. Ku Fung pops up everywhere. There's been times when I felt I needed to go back and double check to see if Ku Fung really was the actor in a role that I recalled. And that might sound like he was forgettable, but I think it's actually a high compliment. People will often say someone disappears into a role, but that usually means they didn't disappear in the least. I think it's remarkable, for example, that Anthony Hopkins plays a convincing Richard Nixon, or that Daniel Day-Lewis could be Christy Brown. But I come away from those films feeling impressed with the performance. And if, for example, I ask somebody to fix my car, I just want to drive away happy rather than think about how much work went into fixing my car. Ku Fung is never like that. When he plays Wong fei Hong, my reaction is to go back and say, huh, that was Ku Fung? Because he just does his job. Ku Fung admittedly had the privilege of being the third build actor on most of his projects. You knew that T. Lung and Alexander Fu Sheng would be themselves in the way that Jeff Goldblum and Will Smith would be themselves. That's a movie star quality, but the character actor slips under the radar. I've thought about this a lot recently, as my favorite James Bond actor, Daniel Craig, tries to distance himself from the taciturn sociopathic character that has launched him into superstardom with quirky turns and low Logan Lucky and the Knives Out films. Logan Lucky seemed like a fun detour, with the intense yet vulnerable Craig playing a goofy southern criminal. But then the Knives Out movies became a thing, a thing appreciated by a wide audience, and I was surprised to find his over-the-top southern charm distracting to me. And the only real difference was that in Logan Lucky, he was the third build side character and not the hero. This might be why Ku Fung is one of my favorite actors. He can pull out all the stops and not worry about becoming an oddball distraction, like, say, Philip Kwok, who I also love in his comic roles. Nobody expects Ku Fung to be the lead, and so he literally disappears into his roles. <laughs> Obviously, I've only been talking about Ku Fung as an actor, and in the Shaw Brothers films, that's generally how you think of him first. But at five foot six and slimly built, he's still made an impressive fighter. He's talked about his work on the new one-armed swordsman with T. Lung and David Chiang. We were ready to die shooting that film. I mean, look at my scars. Imagine if we'd been fighting for real. Ku Fung is commitment, plus talent, and that's the most I could ask of any actor.